Well now, Canada. Have you been there? Are you thinking of going? It was on our bucket list for decades. And we even thought about emigrating there at one time without even having been there to visit. Well, five years ago, we managed to get there and we've ticked it off our bucket list. Welcome to Grey Matters, the channel that promotes the fact that the older generation still matters and looks at issues that matter to the older generation. If you like what you see, please give us a thumbs up because uh, Google and YouTube do like likes. It helps the channel to grow. Now then, Canada. Uh, we went there in 2016 with our usual traveling companions. I'm sure you've seen them lurking around in our previous travel videos. And as with New Zealand, we rented accommodation along our planned route, staying two or three days in each location. We also hired two cars, one for our duration of our time in Alberta and British Columbia, and the other for when we flew east to Toronto. Now we booked all the accommodation and car hires in advance from the UK. Sometimes that can be more expensive, other times it can be cheaper. On this occasion, it worked out cheaper for us. We flew into Calgary, flight time about nine hours, and uh, we had a townhouse in the suburbs, a nice easy commute into the city centre. It's an easy drive in and when you're there you can drive around if you want, but we found it easier to park up and use public transport. It's very efficient. Also at the back of our house was some parkland. Well, we wasted no time in going exploring. The Bow River meandered behind our house and we were probably a little overexcited to see a real life beaver clamber out onto the bank. So what is there to do in Calgary? Plenty is the short answer, but we avoided the Calgary stampede. We missed it by about two weeks and that was deliberate because we would never have found any accommodation. It's incredibly busy during that. It's the, the biggest event they have in the year. We'd love to have seen it, but it just really wasn't viable to do so. There are, however, some other must-see attractions, and two in particular. First is the Calgary Tower, built to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the Canadian Confederation and opened to the public in 1968. The viewing platform gives you a 360 view of the city and way beyond. and the glass floor gives you a great view of a giddying drop to the street below. At 626 feet, it was the tallest freestanding structure in the American continent, until that is, the CN Tower in Toronto was completed in 1976, and that was almost three times taller. The second must-see is Fort Calgary. There is so much to see at the fort that you should set aside a good few hours to take it in, especially if you have kids. The current adult ticket price is $12 and 11 for over 65. We found a special event was running at the fort and for that week, tickets for seniors were free. Result. The site is around 36 acres and recreates a western town and an Indian village. Upon arrival, you will probably get the opportunity to try on various costumes, including a Mounties uniform. Of course, being grown-ups, we resisted the temptation. Yeah, right. Outside, your first encounter will probably be with the authentic Western steam locomotive that chugs around the venue. You can hop on at one of two railroad stations and travel around the park. It will help you to get your bearings, but also might highlight some of the areas you'd like to go back and visit in more detail. They also have a huge lake upon which sails a replica paddle steamer. 
Again, you can ride that for free. Just head down to the dock. We were privileged to meet some genuine Blackfoot Indians in their mocked up Indian village. The Blackfoot tribes were originally nomadic and settled here in Alberta. They got their name from their practice of setting fire to grassland to encourage new growth. Their feet will be blackened from walking through the burned areas. Most of the houses and municipal buildings are occupied by actors who give great insights into the history and way of life in Calgary's early days. Most of your encounters will be interactive. Edwards? Innocent. Innocent? Absolutely. Well, how come you wrote an article about the bank being robbed, and then five minutes later the bank was robbed? Well, the article is just to spark interest in my paper. Someone framed me. They took my hat and my coat, and they used what I wrote in my article to rob the bank, make it look like it was me. We have a first-hand account that the robber was using a Scottish accent. Well, I'm not the only one who's a Scot in this town. I'm pretty sure you are, Mr. Edwards. Oh. Take a good look into that camera. What's it gonna do? Guilty. Oh, guilty. Oh, guilty. As hell. You guilty. Right? As hell. That's right. Oh. You heard it from the magistrate. <laughs> Hang him. Hang him taller. Well, maybe it's that guy. Well, from Calgary, we followed the Bow River West along the Trans Canada Highway to Canmore at the foot of the Rockies, passing the ominously named Dead Man's Flats along the way. Our accommodation there was an apartment in the city centre. There's not much to see in Canmore itself, but its value lies in its location because it's an easy reach to some of the sites such as uh, Lake Louise and its beautiful sister Lake Moraine. They're stunning places. Also to Banff itself, the ski resort, and to the Johnson Canyon Trail. All of them really worth a visit. Lake Louise is relatively small, just two kilometers long and 500 meters wide, but it's deep, reaching 230 meters in places. Beautifully framed by the Rockies, it's probably the most photographed lake in Canada. On its shore is the famous and ultra-luxurious Fairmont Hotel. We could just about afford lunch there, but we certainly couldn't have afforded to stay. If you visit Banff, be sure to take the Banff gondola, the cable car, up Sulphur Mountain, where at the top, the route to the peak is cleverly boardwalked, so most people, even those with some infirmities, should be able to enjoy the views. The Johnson Canyon Trail is part of the Banff National Park and is only 40 minutes from Canmore via the Bow Valley Parkway. Now it, it follows a deep chasm where the rivers and waterfalls roar and crash and it's quite spectacular. There are two routes to follow depending on your stamina and physical abilities. A short half mile stroll to the lower falls or a one and a half mile hike to the upper. And here's a tip for you. The chasm is shaded and moist, so bring an extra layer of clothing, even in summer. Keep your eyes open when travelling around Canada's national parks, because you could well spot a bear or two.
Our third stopover was at Lake Kootenay on the southeast corner of British Columbia. At 104 kilometers long, it's one of the largest lakes in BC. The official website for the area states that the region is an inspirational mecca for foodies, art goers, music lovers, history buffs and adventure seekers. Well, we can certainly vouch for the food. We were staying near Crawford Bay and the Black Salt Cafe became our regular haunt. The food was fantastic. The town is largely filled with arts and crafts people, making and selling everything from paintings and sculptures to fabrics and, believe it or not, brooms. Our house was hidden away in the woods, overlooking the lake, with all the amenities you could wish for, including a sauna and a hot tub. Any downtime was spent reading, painting, soaking in the hot tub with a glass or two of vino, or watching the hummingbirds, eagles and ospreys. It was heaven. A visit to the Ainsworth Hot Springs was recommended to us, and that entailed taking a ferry across the lake, which is claimed to be the longest free ferry ride in North America. At the springs, the water is naturally heated, two kilometers beneath the surface. There are three pools, including one that flows through an underground cave, allowing guests to soak while getting up close with the stalactites. And it's much hotter in there. There's also a stream-fed cold plunge pool, and that is really cold. We ended our journey across the Rockies in Vancouver. Now, this really is a city where there's plenty to do. But in my opinion, the main attractions, the main must-see locations there um, are Stanley Park, the Capilano Suspension Bridge, Granville Island, and a trip along the Fraser River. So let's take a look at each, starting with Granville Island. Granville Island was a heavily industrialised area that has now been repurposed as a major tourist and shopping area with markets, restaurants, bars, food halls, art galleries, theatres and lots more. The Capilano Suspension Bridge is 132 years old and spans 450 feet across the Capilano River and it hangs 250 feet above it. Thankfully, the original hemp ropes have been replaced with steel cables, strong enough apparently to support a Boeing 747 airliner. Mind you, it doesn't feel that way when it's bouncing and swaying. Adjacent to the bridge are seven suspended footbridges offering views 110 feet above the forest floor and a cliff walk with a series of narrow cantilevered bridges, stairs and platforms and only 16 anchor points into the cliff. Stanley Park is located close to downtown Vancouver and is a thousand acre treat. The beauty of this park is that it's not the creation of an architect, but the result of the natural evolution of forests and urbanization. There's an abundance of wildlife. And that wildlife includes raccoons, who appear to rely on the generosity of tourists for food and Strangely, they grope around for it as if they had no sight, like little old blind men. A boat trip along the Fraser River can be calming and relaxing. Well, once you're away from the city. I can't express the joy at spotting a bald eagle up close, but there were some more unusual sights on the river, including a barge piled high with scrap cars. 
The day of our trip was rainy and misty, but it actually gave the river a fantastically mystical appearance. Well, from Vancouver, we took a trip uh, up to Alaska, which we will feature in a future edition of Grey Matters. But upon our return to Vancouver, we flew east to Toronto and Niagara Falls. We arrived in time for the annual Waterfront Festival, with stalls, dancers, shows, and all sorts of foodie treats and entertainment. Be sure to visit the extraordinary Castle Loma. It's a kind of medieval castle, but built in 1914 for Sir Henry Pellet, an eccentric Canadian multimillionaire. Its interiors have featured in several movie and TV productions. Then it was off to Niagara Falls and the obligatory boat trip. We stayed two days at the falls so that we could take in some of the other sites, but of course the highlight was the boat trip. The power and might of the falls is astonishing and it's almost amplified when viewed from the top. Also worth a visit is Fort George, overlooking the Niagara River. It was built around 1796 and served as the headquarters for the British Army during the War of 1812. It played a pivotal role in the defence of Canada, and visitors there are treated to military displays and demonstrations, as well as being able to go into the historic buildings. I was able to hit a target the size of my hat consistently. 30 meters is much shorter, from that end of our benches to that end. Now, most battles don't start at 30 meters or 75 yards, so I use the front gate as an example. The front gate is 240 yards to your rear. Anyone standing at that distance would be entirely safe. I could stand back here, fire all day long, and about the only injury I would cause is perhaps a hernia from laughing at me. Ready? Ten. Fire. <laughs> So there you have it, highlights from a trip from Calgary across the Rockies to Vancouver and then back to Toronto. If you've been there, we'd love to know your experiences. Did we miss out any treats that you would recommend to other people? Do you agree with our assessment of some of those locations? Do let us know what you think in the comments down below. We'd love to get your comments and, and opinions. Looking ahead, what future content can you expect from Grey Matters? Well, I hope soon to get my long promised second interview with Jess Mitchell, looking at the lighter side of growing old. Yeah. Um, and then I've got a, a, an interview with a lovely lady who had to take medical retirement after an accident at work. And then of course, there's the new travel video showing our trip up to Alaska. That's a lot to look forward to with that. So until the next time, thanks for joining us on Grey Matters. Bye for now.